everyone, I'm Kelly Hydebrader and this is Lenaway. We're taking our cameras to all the schools around the district to give you that first-hand look at how hard our teachers are working and the wonderful things our kids are learning. Here at the Tech Center, we have students that are learning how to save lives. My general impression is that he's unconscious, maintaining C-spine at this time, and we're gonna call ALS, sir, sir, sir. The Emergency Medical Technician program here at the Tech Center prepares the students to become uh, EMTs. It teaches basic anatomy, we teach the students a lot of about assessment, and one of the long-range goals in this program is for the student to understand how the body functions, assess the patient, um, formulate a treatment plan, and then implement that treatment plan. Checking pulse? No pulse. Starting CPR? It's a very big step for the kids. Uh, they're looking the real world right in the eyes. Uh, they do a lot of uh, clinical work, they do work in the emergency room, and, and they do ride-alongs in the local ambulance services. So they're thrown right into the heat of things uh, once they graduate from this program. Your arm hurts? In your leg, did you say? I have several students that have gone on to nursing, a couple to medical school, PA school, things like that, and it, uh, it helps prepare them. They get a basic understanding of body function, and, and one of the unique things that they get is they get patient contact so they can really determine if this is what they want to do. Her respirations are 18, her pulse is 60, and her blood pressure is 118 over 74. 7, 28, 29, 30. The workforce is getting older. Um, if you look at the EMS people out there and fire services, it, uh, we're getting older, we're getting ready to retire, and um, we need to start at this level to pique the interest uh, of these students and promote uh, our profession. It's great to see all of these kids working so hard that are also college bound here at the Tech Center. It's a great foundation for their college ahead. Now we're jetting off to Britton Deerfield schools where these kids are building robots. Let's check it out. Today they are learning about writing code for robots and they are creating programs um, to help run the program with different basic commands. Brock, you're going to hit the button and it's going to run through the program, so go ahead and hit the button. So the wheels are going to spin and it's going to wait for three seconds and then they're going to stop and then they're going to reverse and spin the other way. So here, can you just hit the limit switch? And it's going to run through the program again and the wheels are going to spin. And then after it's done with that, I'm going to turn this. It's going to turn on the motor. And then once I spin it to the left again, it's going to turn off. It's going to turn on the light. Teachers there are creating some 3D thinkers. Well, are you getting hungry? Well, then you are in luck. Culinary arts students are whipping up a yummy chicken recipe, but you have to wait 60 seconds. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, High School Sports, a winning part of a complete education. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, or even what you wear. You just need to be there. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Our culinary arts kids are pretty experienced in the kitchen, thanks to our award-winning chef, Jake Graff. And one of our student chefs, Ty McLean, whipped up his recipe for chicken tenders.
Welcome folks, I'm gonna do a demo for you today. So my panko fried chicken, and I got some mashed potatoes over there that we're gonna put on a plate. So first, I've got my uh, chicken in a buttermilk dredge. I'm gonna take that out. It's been sitting in there probably about a half hour now, just to make sure you keep it moist. So what we do first is you put it in the egg wash. Put it in your flour. Egg wash it one more time. And then roll it in your panko crumbs, which will give it a nice golden brown on the outside after you fry it. And you repeat that process with how many other chicken tenders you have, which I have four. So I have my four chicken tenders ready. They're all breaded. And what we're gonna do now is I've got a pan over here of canola oil. Set it about 350. So we're gonna drop these bad boys in. We'll, we'll do about, you can do as many as you want at a time, but we'll do about two at a time. Make sure your oil's nice and hot. And you have a, have a towel here to set your tongs on. So we're gonna let those fry. So as you see over here, got some potatoes in here that we finished. Um, I put actually put about a teaspoon of butter and then about another cup of milk. To keep them nice and creamy, I added some kosher salt and pepper. So now that you can, you can obviously see with the camera that Duran has, the chicken's getting a nice golden brown on the outside. I can actually stick these other two in now. And you have to be making sure that you cook your chicken right with this because if you don't, then you're gonna have not moist chicken. You don't want dry chicken. You know, even though you, know, you can have it moist, sometimes you still want some barbecue sauce with it, but it's best if you keep that chicken as moist as possible while you're in the process. So these are, these are getting there here, as you can see. Might just cut one open, see how much little, see how much longer it has here. We're gonna get, a, get my knife here and cut this bad boy open, see how much longer it has here. He's gotta be careful, because you don't want that raw on the inside. And actually, that only has about a little bit longer, so we'll stick this back into the fryer. Here. Like I said, chicken is tricky. You don't want it raw in the middle, because if you have it raw in the middle, then you can get really sick from it. It's something that we actually use a lot more here than, you know, like prime and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's actually nice to have. You know, I actually enjoy chicken if it's cooked the right way. So. As you can see, that raw spot's starting to go away. So it's getting nice and cooked and brown. That one that we cut open is finished. Which makes me assume that these other ones are, are getting pretty darn close. So now what we're gonna do is we'll grab my plate here, take one chicken tender. That one's that one's definitely done. So we'll take this one right here. Plate it on our potatoes here. Kind of get them in the middle here. Take a little bit of our kosher salt. Right here. You always want to make sure when you're seasoning things that you season from the top. So that way you can get the seasoning all over. I'm Tom McLean, and that's how to make panko fried chicken. I love having our studio right next to the kitchen because sometimes we get to try these recipes. Great job, Ty. Now, I hope you got all the ingredients that are in your pantry so you can make this for your dinner tonight as well. Okay, everyone, sit up straight. Our school nurse says it's good posture leads to good health. And it's right after this. Go for a mouthful. Go for the fun. Oh, go for go cake. For for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes. And it's go for go. Open wide, stuff your face.
There's always room for more comfort cakes. Oh. Empty the box, they're reload. Eat those comfort cakes till you explode. Exercised lately. Till you explode. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. It's easy to relax and not even realize you're slouching. But I'm sure your mom or grandmother always reminded you to sit up straight. Well, sitting up straight also has some health benefits. Our LASD school nurse, Mary Markle, explains. Hi, I'm Mary Markle, LISD nurse. I want to talk to you about posture today. First, posture equals power. Next time you go into a meeting feeling a little stressed, walk in standing tall with shoulders back. Studies have shown this can actually make those around you feel you are more powerful and in control. Say goodbye to back pain. Good posture is critical to reducing back and neck pain. Slouching can add strain to muscles and put stress on the spine. The Cleveland Clinic notes that people who suffer from back pain experience positive changes when they improve their posture. It also helps you look good and feel confident. Needless to say, being upright does wonders for your appearance. You look taller, slimmer, and more successful when you sit and stand tall. A study by researchers at Ohio State University found that sitting upright actually reinforced confidence. Lose weight, this is amazing. You can actually burn up to 350 calories a day by being upright. This is because by carrying yourself better, you are taking tension off the whole body and everything flows better. Good posture helps you breathe better. Keeping an upright stance helps open up the airways and ensure proper breathing. This allows more oxygen to flow through the cardiopulmonary system. The blood is then able to carry sufficient oxygen to the whole body and ensure that your nervous system, organs, and other tissues function effectively. And finally, improve your memory, brain, and mood. A study conducted by Indiana University focused on how words and memories are linked to posture and found that babies' learning ability is in fact affected by their posture. Being upright also improves everyone's ability to feel more energetic and happy. I'm Mary Markle. Be well. That just made you sit up straighter, didn't it? If you'd like to contact her, just email her at mary.markle at lasd.us or you can give her a call at 517-265-1689. When we come back, we are hitting the airwaves with the kids at Addison Schools. Hi, I'm Mike Rowe. 14 years ago, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Well, this year, she celebrated her 50th wedding anniversary. Is that why you've taken off your jeans? No, I've taken off my jeans to prove the link between jeans and the fight against breast cancer. Well, that's interesting. Do I have to take off my jeans? No, nobody has to take off their jeans, Mom, but everybody has to go to DenimDay.com right now. I'll explain everything. Dress code optional. Apparently. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Learn more at DenimDay.com. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. We think the world of TV and radio is pretty exciting here at the LISD Tech Center. And we have a whole class that learns how to put on television shows and radio broadcasts right here at the LISD Tech Center. Addison Schools is also learning this and they have their own radio station. Let's check it out. This is WQARLD, Addison, Michigan, 95.7 FM, Q95, The Panther, Addison's home for classic rock. Hello, and you're on with Q95 Panther. 
So I think that being on the radio is such an amazing opportunity because you have the opportunity to speak, you have the opportunity to learn um, technological things, you can also um, really develop your sense of style in the way that you would like to present yourself just by using your words to people. We are the only student-led radio station in the Tri-County area and there's probably not many uh, student radio stations around the state. We go live, we call our radio station Q95 The Panther. We are a 24-7 uh, radio station. We are a classic rock radio station. So far this is our second year of having the radio station and students are involved in all sorts. We actually had someone who was in the radio class and actually switched his major to communications because he realized, hey, like this is an option for me. And I was recently talking to someone who um, realized that he would like to work with people, but he also loves to speak in front of people. So he changed to communications. And that's something that's, I think that's so amazing that it can um, improve confidence in the way that you act and the way that you speak and it can improve your ability to kind of think on the spot and it can also improve you being able to figure out what you want to do with your life. We have some future LISD TV students right there. Well, do you like math? Kids that really like math around Lenawee County can join a club called Equations. They play math games and it sharpens their math skills and they get to know other kids that like math just like they do. We hosted a countywide tournament right here at the LASD Tech Center. So, let the equations begin. Hi, I'm Ben Lammers and we're here at the Equations Super Tournament at the LISD Tech Center. Let's check it out. Uh, the students have a great opportunity at the Tech Center today for the Super Tournament. They're playing equations which is a game created by a professor at the University of Michigan back when. Uh, it revolves around making and solving equations using order of operations, uh, skills that they're going to see anywhere from fifth grade up through high school. It's a creative way to take all those math concepts and integrate all the problem solving that uh, some students really um, have a strength in. Now we're back at the Equation Super Tournament with Madeline and Derek. Derek, how did you get into Equations? I think that math is really fun and I love doing math and so I found something that was cool and fun to me. And Madeline, can you explain the game of Equations a little bit? Um, equations is a game with three players. There's 24 cubes, four different colors, and you take turns rolling the cubes and picking a solution. Then using the cubes that are rolled, you find a solution to the goal. Now we're going to go over to Mrs. Marlatt from Onsted Elementary to tell you a little bit more about the game. Um, so the game over here actually is how they play it is. They set up a goal it can be a number or it can be an equation for the students. There's three areas where then you place cubes and you build equations. So in the beginning, they have operation cubes and number cubes that they're gonna strategically place in certain areas. One of the areas is permitted, one is required, and one is forbidden. If a cube goes in forbidden, just that one cube can't be used any longer, so it might eliminate some of their equations. If it's in permitted, they can use it or they don't have to in their equation. If anything is placed in required, though, that has to be in their equation. So the game revolves around moving cubes, and then based on whatever the goal is, students are looking to grab the larger um, challenge cube in calling either an A flub, a P flub, a CA or CP flub, and a force out. Yes, so an A flub is one more cube makes that goal. So if everything is in those strategic positions and it's just one more cube makes whatever someone set, that would be an A flub. If something is deemed a P flub, that means there's no solution anymore. If something is considered a force out, that's when they typically have two cubes left 
all the other cubes are on the board, and it's a way to end the game without somebody being called with an A flub or a P flub. If they put it um, in forbidden though, they can be called a P flub. Anywhere else would be an A flub. Um, the CA and the CP flubs are just somebody maybe missed calling something and the whole solution is on the board or it was already something that they couldn't solve. And we're back again with Kara, who just finished a game. How do you feel about that game, Kara? Um, it was pretty good and I liked the places I was in. Tell me a little bit about the game of equations. Um, well, you try to do math and make equations to fit a goal that you have to do and you just make equations with times and plus and minuses and all kinds of math equations. What made you get into equations? Um, I really liked math and I just decided that since I loved doing equations that this would probably be right for me. What do you look forward to in the future? Um, actually learning some new equations and being able to know some more people in the tournament. So our award ceremony um, will do first, second, and third place for all of our divisions. So in um, fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth grade this year we have three divisions and then in high school we have two. So obviously there's a lot of trophies, there's a lot of awards. Um, all of the high school participants get medals and then first place along with getting the big trophy each student gets an individual trophy which the kids think is really special and it's something really cool that we can do. That was such a crazy fun day. So many smart kids. If your kids really love math, have them ask about an equations club in their school. I'm sure there is one. Well, that's our show, and thanks for sharing some time with us. If you see some amazing things going on right here in Lenawee County, we want to know about it. Email us at lasdtv at lasd.us. I'm your host, Kelly Hydebreeder. Make it a great day, Lenawee.